In this video, I'm going to give you the latest build information on the CNC HP wing. And the first step, as always, is to uh, wipe down the wing halves. Now I'm going to be using contact paper. And I've already pre-cut my sheets. Now this stuff comes in 20 inch and 18 inch widths. Anywhere from 6 foot long to, I have found a 25, 25 foot long. But at any rate, I am going to be using 20 inch stuff and I'm going to cut it. I cut it to a length of 28 and a quarter inches. Just like this. Okay. So now I start and I grab one of my sheets. And again, I make sure that it is dust free. And I'm going to take and lay it down and angling it, matching the side here and the end. And then I'm just going to let it fall in place, press it down in the center. And I'm going to lay those down so that I can cover those as well. So I'm going to lay this right close to the trailing edge, mash it down. And then we will do this side the same way. And we will do this one close to the leading edge and lay it down. I've left about a sixteenth inch gap between the two. And then I'm going to take one tip, lay it down, and then the other tip, and lay it down. And now I'm going to go ahead and rough cut the parts out. And I'll set these aside and trim them. First thing we do is we mash the contact paper, getting good contact with the surface that we're mounting it to, and especially around the edges. And we always want to mash from the center out. And to trim these, I use a formica board. I'm not going to trim all of this for you, but I will show you how I go about trimming each of the pieces. And after it's trimmed out, then I'll make sure and go around the edge and mash it down. And now when I do the other side or the other wing half, I will take these and lay them down the other way. And this way I wind up covering all of the parts for the aileron. One trick with the aileron is what I will do is lay the uh, my ruler down and I think rather than tell you I will show you on the next wing half. So I'm going to jump to the next wing half so that you can see how I go about doing that because actually you're going to wind up back cutting. The aileron is tapered. I did the outside of the top now we need to do the underside. If we do the underside, then whenever we cut it, we got to cut it underneath here. And that can be difficult if you're not used to doing it.
Okay, that brings us to this piece here. And I'm just going to start in the center and work the material to the edges. And then I'm going to go around the edge and mash it down really good. But again, starting at the center and working out. Now I'm going to turn it around and work from the center out that way. Again, just using my hands, my fingers. I used to use a credit card. I made a, a little squeegee and one of the buddies that builds a lot of these wings said, hey, says, i just been using my hands and it works out really good. And by gosh, he was right. So now I'll set this one aside and I'll get the original one. And we'll do the same thing. Again, start in the center and just work toward the edges. And if you get an air bubble, let's say tomorrow you look and all of a sudden there's an air bubble. Well, don't, uh, don't try to work it out. Just take a sharp X-Acto knife, pop the center of it, and then mash it. Because what will happen is if you try to move the bubble out, all you're doing is lifting and then expecting it to stick again. And it will, but it won't stick as well as if you'd have just left it and popped the bubble. So, um, this stuff here works really good, really well. All right, here's an example. I've got a bubble right there. Rather than mess with it, I'm just going to prick the center of it and mash it down. And that way I'm not uh, letting the stuff stick and then move the bubble, because when you move the bubble, it's just going to unstick it. So. That's what I do. Now we're going to go ahead and trim this. And again, I trim on a piece of Formica board most of the time. It's easier on the blade because we're not pressing real hard. But I am using a sharp blade and it cuts really well. So I just go through and trim. And I'm going to show you a little trick that I use because of the board. It allows me to... Uh, trim this piece here actually pretty easily and I will show you that in just a moment let me just go ahead and go around this and if you cut into the foam not a big deal just uh, carry on but I've trimmed a lot of these so I can actually make it look pretty easy all right now to trim into this to get this I first start and trim the straight edges just like that then I lay this over and because my surface is elevated I can actually work from the top and go right around the corner and again a sharp exacto knife works really well so now you can see how that trimmed up so again cut the, sharp, the straight edge turn it over and if you're not sure where the corner is, just press it down. You'll be able to see the crease. And then you can go right around it, just like that. So now, once I've got it all trimmed, very carefully, because this will cut you. And I'm actually doing it in a, in a direction going away rather than coming to me, because that's when you get cut. So I just go around and mash the edges. Again, kind of pulling it to me, or away from the, the sharp edge, because this will cut you. So now I have this one. Let's move on and do this one again. The same thing. Work from the center and go out and start trimming. Now I had already mashed this out, so didn't have to do it. Okay, here again, straight edge, straight edge, and then around the radius. Okay. The 
the last step now is to again go around the edges. You want to do this very carefully because again this will cut you. Then you can check it for bubbles, any air pockets. Again, if you have an air pocket, sharp exacto blade, poke the center of it, and then mash it out. And it should be fine. Um, the next step is to go ahead and reinforce the center section or the underside. Now the kit comes with these braces, and these braces actually get glued in right about there. But I don't use these braces. I still supply them, but I do not use them. The reason that I don't use them is because I use the tape to re do the reinforcing. And what I do is I run the tape from the battery hole along the pockets for the spar up to the servo. Like I see, I just put that piece of tape in. It goes from up here back to the servo. And then another piece right above the arc here. And again, goes back to the servo. The tape will lap. Oh, about eight a quarter of an inch, like that. Now we do the other side. The other side can be longer. It's actually the bottom side. So this one we can run almost to the trailing edge or to the tip. And this one also runs up to the pocket, the back side of the pocket. And here we're going to stay short of the trailing edge and up. So now I have the reinforcing here. So we're going to do the same thing on this one. Again, this is the bottom side. We're going to go from that pocket back down, almost to the trailing edge. It doesn't really matter how far down you go, as long as you go past the, the server. But I just run this side here down a little bit more. We go down like that. Turn around again, servo pocket to the hole or to the back side of this pocket here. Just like that. Now I'm ready to do the fold. The fold consists of just pulling this over, matching this edge with this edge, this edge with this edge, this edge with this edge. And of course this edge here with this one. The trick to doing this is whenever you fold it over, make sure that this line and this line, which are this line and this line, that they come together. If they come together, then the edges will, will mate and match. So if I bring those together like that, and then I hold this down, if I just pick this up and show it to you, you can see that those edges match. These edges here match, and so do the trailing edges. It's all about how you make that fold. So once we get the fold, then we have an issue right here. And we can cut that, or I myself use a little sanding block, or a sanding T as it's called. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sanding off this edge right here. It doesn't take the just about that much. So now we've gotten rid of that. So now I'll do the other side. And again, I'm going to start the fold, just kind of exercising it. And then I'm going to fold it over. I'm, I'm making sure that these two match, by the way. And then I fold it over. I match this side, fold it down, and pull it. Whenever they're good, then I move it on and Whenever I pick this up, it twists a little bit, but you can see the edges are matching. So now, I'm going to force it down in the front, and then again, I need to sand this little deal here off. I can even do it here. Just like that. That's all we need to do. So now these two edges will come together, and they will mate, which is what I'm ready to do now. So, I'm going to open it back up. I'm going to mark these holes 
and I mark those holes now because they're easy to see, they're easy to find. And the way I find them is I hold this up to the light, and then I look for the light shining through the hole, and then I poke it with the pin. just like that. So now I know this is where the hole is and this is where the hole is. Because once you get it folded, you may not be able to see them very well. So I just poked them with a pin. Now I have the holes. Okay, now I'm going to join the wings. So the first thing I do is I locate the top, which is where the servo pocket is. I want to make sure that is up and I'm going to be joining the bottoms. So that's up there, and here it is here. It's going to go to the top. My holes, I can look for those. They're going to be here and here. So I'm going to join this back here, just like that. I'm matching the trailing edge here, and I use weight to hold my foam in place while I put the tape on it. So I'm going to run a piece of tape right down the center here and I'm going to tape this together so now I have this tape I'm going to work out my tape I'm going to mash this down really well now I can remove the weight because I want to trim my tape to the edge, the trailing edges so I trim this piece, and then I trim the front, just like that. Now I have another weight that I use. I'm going to glue the leading edges together now, or the center seam together. With the hot glue, I'm just going to run a, a small bead. set it down and put my weight on it. And now I wait for this to cure, which takes oh, about a, maybe 30 seconds because my piece of steel here has the tape on it. And of course anywhere where you're going to have the hot glue, you want to glue together. You don't want to put the tape on because you can see there the tape does not stick very well to the hot glue. So, which makes it great for this application because I have this now smooth, it's glued, and I'm ready to move on. So we take the firewall pieces, I'm going to look for the biggest piece, which is going to be this one, and I need to glue this in place right here, so I'm going to do that now. You don't have a lot of working time whenever you glue to the wood, so you want to do this quickly. So I run a bead of glue around my part, And then I put my part in place. Again, you do not have a lot of working time because actually the wood will, will cool off the hot glue pretty quickly. So you want to make sure you get it in place. As quick as possible. And you just hold it there for, oh, maybe 30 seconds or so. And I'm ready to move on to the next step. Now your the firewall comes in four pieces. Uh, depending on which motor you're going to use, you're either going to use this piece as the final piece or this piece. Uh, this piece is actually set up for the motor that I recommend because of the holes. And whenever you're finished, you're going to drill these holes out, make sure there's no glue in them because that's actually going to aid in cooling of the motor. Also in the bottom piece, you're going to be cutting this hole here out of the foam so that you can actually use it for cooling and also you can use it to help launch. Also the back side of this motor mount uh, or the firewall, these legs here will go and match the length here and that actually aids in launching because you can put your fingers, you will be putting your fingers up against this if you use the launch hole so you'll be holding it like that. This finger here will go into the hole. This finger and this finger will be pushing up against the wood to push the model whenever you go to launch. So now I'm ready to go ahead and do the fold.
for the wing. Everything else is exactly the same as it has been, so you can watch the other videos uh, because I don't re really need to go into uh, how to build the wing um, other than the fact that it's on other videos, so uh, basically everything is just duplicated. Whenever you're finished, you will glue this piece to the bottom side or to the underside, which would be here, and then you will glue this piece on with the long side again matching the bottom and then you will put on the final piece which again if you're using the turnigy motor it'll be this one which matches with the holes already in here or if you're using some other motor and the holes are a problem then you put this one on and then that gives you um, a good solid mounting surface to put your screws in for other motors.